A lot of changes have come to weapons, enemies and more in the recent patch 1.06 for Mass Effect Andromeda, so I'll be retesting every weapon to what's changed. In this video we'll be covering shotguns. Without further delay, let's get right into it. Shotguns are my personal favourite weapon type. They are made for the run and gun skirmish types as a base and are excellent anti-armour weapons. The range makes them close range with the occasional medium so while range will be commented on it's not a primary concern. Each weapon will be tested and reviewed briefly for overall performance and experience followed by a more accurate DPS test afterward for damage comparisons. The following weapons will be tested in this video. Rusad, Piranha, Crusader, Venom, Darn, Hesh, Scattershot, Disciple, Katana and the Pathfinder Deep Impact. The Riga Carbine acts far more like an assault rifle with its high accuracy and damage aimed at shields among other things so it will be tested with either the assault rifles or in the special weapons category. The Rusad is a slow firing, fairly hard hitting shotgun that staggers the enemy on impact. It's fairly fun to use, but only without behaviour modifying augments. The sticky grenade augment halved the magazine size and both grenade and sticky lowered the damage by at least half. The stagger on impact is a nice touch and makes up a little for the lesser damage of such a slow firing weapon. The Piranha is a fully automatic combat shotgun that delivers medium damage rounds at a very fast pace. As with what I expect most of the shotguns to be like, the vanilla version performs best with a slightly strange outcome with a clip on the sticky being taken down by more than half, from 12 to 5 in my test while the vanilla and standard grenade augment variations remain 12. The Crusader is a hard hitting shotgun with a very satisfying punch. It seems to be like the bullet version of a darn, a little less powerful but only slightly, to the point that it seems the update did increase the Crusade to the damage it states, yet the tooltip is incorrect. We'll hopefully find that out later when I perform the consistency in damage testing. The sticky as with all others halved the magazine and didn't do very good damage. This augment will not be tested with any further shotguns except the Venom. The grenade augment however worked very well and did around the same amount of damage except it was also AoE, though the vanilla hits for weak point bonus where the grenade does not. Its use depends on your usage as AoE or single target. The Venom is a strange one being a shotgun that fires mini grenades at ricochet and whatnot. It is worth noting that Venom cannot take a receiver, so if you use a bioconverter no extension is needed, and if you don't then a single mod extension at most would be required. After testing it out, it feels less like a shotgun and more like a gun that just has a built-in plasma charge system that also ricochets. It's okay, but it's not all that powerful. The grenade organ seems to be about the same damage-wise, which isn't all that much. I used to stick it here as I knew it would take away the ricochet, but as before, it also more than half the magazine and the damage. The Darn is an extremely heavy hitting semi-automatic shotgun that fires a plasma sphere. Opposite to real life, this means it will not suffer from damage drop off at range, so it can be used at medium range also. For those curious, the science in this weapon for how it sustains a plasma sphere is correct to life, in the sense that a magnetic field can be used to keep the plasma stabilised, and has been done to a distance of 2 feet successfully in real life. I bring this up as it's both interesting, but also means that really the Darn should travel a shorter distance than the solid projectiles, but it would also vaporise a person firing it. Anyway, I'm getting distracted here. So, the Darn has always felt very satisfying to use, especially when doing a run and gun type approach. Its hard hitting means decent accuracy is needed to make good use of this weapon, but with good accuracy this thing can do insane hits when used against weak points, something that was increased in the latest patch. Weak point damage specifically for the Darn, and it showed when I one shotted a Destin with full health and shields via a headshot compared to the usual two full shots required. The grenade launcher augment is interesting on this one. This was discovered on patch day by Dark Saint as he was testing the guns after the changes. He found the Darn does a bit more damage with the grenade augment in. If you add the kinetic coil to the spot on the vanilla which would have otherwise had the grenade augment, they're about the same. The special thing here is the AoE aspect. Now, the grenade launcher doesn't react to weak point, so personally I would stick to the vanilla and as with the Crusader, this is a multi versus single target choice. Vanilla for single, for definite, and grenade launch for multi. 
The Hesh works in a similar way to a buckshot shotgun. It sprays a cluster of projectiles, but as it's kept, these are plasma surrounded projectiles. The grenade augment has proven to be effective, but only with single shot shotguns, so will not be tested here, and the sticker grenade, as stated before, has shown to be lacking. The Hesh was surprisingly awesome. It has a range of the Darn being plasma coated. It felt a little like there was a touch of seeking there, but I cannot confirm. Just an aid to the accuracy. Its super fast rate of fire was fantastic and seemed well balanced with the power it has. I can see this being a contender in the rankings. The Scattershot is another strange one. It has fairly low damage for a shotgun and its rate of fire isn't all that. It shoots its projectile spray wide so it's largely ineffective at close range but has a seeking function at mid range to bring them together on a single target. Its accuracy is pretty much maxed, has infinite ammo, a clip size of 15 and about average weight. I said all the stats just because they're also weird for a shotgun and that requires weird augments to use for it. I tried a number of combinations for this one. I tried vanilla, then seeking plasma, then seeking plasma charge, then plasma ricochet. After that I also tried a shield oscillator build with rank 6 mods and a sticky grenade launcher to get rid of as much of the mag size as possible. I got it down from 15 to 3 shots per mag. Unfortunately the time spent doing those 3 shots for 25% shields could be better spent doing something else for higher damage and or health or shield regen. Out of the damage builds most were unimpressive but the seeking plasma was the best for single target with the plasma charge and ricochet superior for AoE and I mean very good for AoE. I'm adding this and not replacing the previous for transparency, as I spoke with Dark Saints after and we discussed the shield oscillator build. I did some more testing this time with the plasma charge not sticky and got the mag to the same. Then I realised it was the skills I had, so I took all skill points away and it had a single shot that recharged super fast. So this build actually works super well. Can charge or not, don't even have to hit anything to get 25% shields every second. And it does adequate damage too. The Disciple feels like a bookshot darn from the stats. High damage, low rate of fire, large magazine. Let's see how it fares. The Disciple is hugely affected by range. It feels like the damage drop off affects this gun more than any other as at close to medium range its damage is kind of bad, but at close range it's crazy. If you point blank it feels on par with the darn for damage except it has more shots per mag. It's also very satisfying at close range. The grenade launcher as expected was awful. The katana is generally unimpressive, it did ok damage and as with every weapon could technically be used to complete the game, but the satisfaction level is quite low on this weapon. It doesn't feel great, it has a narrow firing line but also suffers heavily from drop off over distance. I tried this just to see how fun it is to use. As it only goes up to rank 5 I see no point in ranking this for damage. It was acceptable but nothing really special. Kind of like the katana really. Low satisfaction rating on shot. I can confirm the deconstruction for recovery of some material and augmentations used in crafting is definitely possible on this weapon now. To find out the DPS rankings of the shotguns I'm going to do an awful lot of mathematics. I'll be fighting a fiend one on one with each weapon, I'll record the rate of fire, the percentage of health loss per shot, how many shots it takes to kill the fiend, reload time and compare all of these to the current statistics to both check for consistency and damage per second. All shots on the fiends will be to centre mass, I'll be making sure not to hit weak points to keep the results as accurate as possible. Due to this the length of time it takes me to kill it will not be considered. Real in-game conditions will be met with appropriate skills taken, mods used and all augment slots filled for each weapon in its respective best build scenario, as some benefit more from different mods and augments than others. Shotgun skills have been maxed and more points spent in combat to a total of 120 to mimic a likely makeup for those who dabble in weaponry as well as others. Here are all of the builds to be used for the testing for each weapon, feel free to pause to check them out, otherwise let's continue. So after the better part of a day's worth of sunlight later, I have done all of my tests, analysed them and got a big old spreadsheet full of data. I changed a little part of how I was working this out just beforehand and realised after this would have been far more accurate on insanity difficulty as originally I was going to measure the amount per shot but instead I measured the amount of shots required to find the percentage per shot and therefore the health of the fiend to check for consistency. 
it is not amazingly consistent. It's within 12% either side of the mean. I analyse for any accidental weak point shots or misses, so this is definitely down to other variables. It's possible that the fiend's body isn't just simple weak points and non-weak points, and that it actually has a gradient-based damage system on top of the weak points. If not then, it is most likely that these weapons have another hidden stat, making them perform individually better against armour and not just better against it as a shotgun. These results show quite clearly, even just through the Crusader compared to the Darn, that the updates notes were bullshit. The in-game stats however appear to be correct, but don't take into account certain things like kinetic coils and such when displaying the damage. Adding the correct percentage on yourself will give a rough estimate, but unfortunately we don't know exactly how the game multiplies buff. Whether it takes a percentage from the base damage or stacks groups of buffs on top of each other. This all results in relatively minor differences though, so don't worry too much about it. So as far as rankings go from these tests, the Darn is far ahead for single shot damage, like nearly doubling the next highest, but for damage per second taking reloading into account, the Piranha is king. With Piranha's DPS being 1437, the next is only 82% of that, and is the Hesh, with the Darn being almost identical at 81%, but then Disciple in 4th is less than 70% of the Piranha, with the Katana nearly half the DPS of the top. If you then add a bioconvert to the weapon as its special augment, it shoots up to 1944 for the Piranha in DPS, and the Darn catches up a little, in second place being 87% of the Piranha at 1689 DPS. The Hesh is 76% at 1485, and the Disciple at 4th is already down to 61% of the Piranha. The actual DPS here isn't the important thing. It's the percentage in relation to each other which makes it valid to all levels, difficulties, ranks and builds. To show you just how powerful the bioconverter is, it adds 49% extra damage per second onto the Rusad, 45% onto the Darn, 35% onto Piranha and 38% onto the Scattershot. That is with full overheating as the test requires continuous damage to be valid. All of this shows that the best weapon for damage is clearly the Piranha, with the Darn and Hesh close behind. The rest aren't really worth much. That being said, there is a lot to be said about preference, so if you prefer a particular gun, use it. You'll be able to complete the game with it, and if it's more fun then great. I'll personally be sticking to the Darn as my main weapon. I really like it and prefer high power per shot. The Prana we're seeking will still be my go-to architect gun. As for top builds, I simply recommend seeking for the Prana, buy a converter for all of them, a single mod extension if you melee at all, and fill with coils. The mod should be a barrel and receiver with a melee optimizer if you melee at all and have included the single bot extension. Okay, so this was a little insane to do. Those last one to two minutes of the video took a full day to record, test, analyze and process. And I have a feeling most of you don't really care about taking it that far, as far as science goes. But if you do, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching to the end. It really helps promote the video and get it in front of the faces of others. Like if you liked, dislike if you didn't, subscribe if you haven't already, and have an awesome day folks.